Hey everybody, it's another week and it's another episode of My Hoa Live. It's Andy Hudson with Missouri Ice Hockey Officials Association coming at you today from a rainy St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and I am here with an amazing guest uh, who only has 2,000 NHL hockey games, maybe more than that, only about 2,000 more than me, and nine Stanley Cup finals, which is nine Stanley Cups more than I do as well. So let's welcome Brian Murphy. Murph, are you there? I'm here, Andy. How you doing? There he is. What's going on, man? Oh, not much. Great. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. It's 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 a pleasure. And uh, I usually introduce myself as a below average YouTuber, an average ice skater, and an above average official. Um, so I got that going for me. But well, I'm definitely a below average YouTuber. I can tell you that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> somebody uh, somebody was messing around with me the other day and said only nine Stanley Cup finals and I said well yeah I've I've worked nine USA Hockey National Championships so you and I got a lot in common besides the haircut um, well that's why I wear the hat so it's a little <laughs> easier my buddy Scott Zelkin told me to give up the good fight so uh, I just wear the baseball hat all the time when was the last time you had a haircut uh, well my wife does it so it's usually about once a week so it's uh, it's pretty convenient I didn't have to worry this COVID thing didn't bother me and my I still got the same uh, hairstyles that's right. I, I my wife gives me grief, but uh, the amount that she spends on her haircuts, I've saved a bunch of money on my barber. So, probably for the past ten or fifteen years. But, well, listen. Thank you so much for for joining us. This is fantastic. I appreciate it. Well, it's a privilege to be here. I mean, I got uh, special affi affiliation with you guys. I mean, uh, I know you and Bob, and I mean, I just think you guys just do a tremendous job there in Missouri. It's incredible the, the work you do with the officials and you know, to stand there and talk to you before the games um, in St. Louis and learn about everything that you guys do and how well you do it. It's uh, I was always jealous of of the uh, the impact that you guys have on the local community. And it's a credit to uh, you guys uh, for what you do. But it's also something that I've brought to other our referee and chiefs for USA Hockey and said, this is what these guys are doing and we've got to be better. And so I think you guys are kind of an inspiration for really the whole country. Well, thanks. Thanks. We, uh, we enjoy it. And by the way, Bob, uh, you mentioned Bob and that's Bob Hounstein. He sent me a text earlier and he was having internet problems. I don't know if that's uh, user error or internet error, um, but he said to say hello. So hello from Bob. And uh, I'm sure he's, uh, he's tuning in if he can, but. No, he's a great person and you guys are lucky to have him. Yeah, yeah, he is a great person, and um, let's not let his head get too big here, Murph. But um, <laughs> okay, but you're right; he is, he is, he is. So um, you know, we'd like to do. Uh, I, as I mentioned before, we went on the air. I just kind of started this on a whim, and I've had some great guests on here. Um, I had uh, uh, Coho on, Big Coho and Little Coho. I had Jay Shares on a couple weeks ago, and now I've got you. So that's three NHLers, and I'm curious. Can you remember a time when that was a three-man crew, maybe, with Coho in the center and you and you uh, and Jay on the lines? Absolutely. Uh, I believe it was either 1996 or 1997. Uh, the three of us started the season in Japan, uh, Calgary and San Jose Sharks. So it was, uh, there was two games over there. Uh, Terry Gregson went two. Um, back then, it was only a one-referee system, so Gregson worked one game. Coho worked the other game and Jay and I worked the lines for both games. And uh, Brian Lewis was there. We toured Japan for four or five days. Terry Gregson might be the greatest tour guide you ever want to have. <laughs> and, um, the only thing I can tell you is like, I mean, this is pretty tough because Coho might be one of the funniest people you ever want to meet. And Jay shares might be one of the most articulate people you ever want to meet. So pretty tough act. <laughs> you got me following those two guys. I would have rather gone first, but um <laughs> You know, they're just, uh, you know, two great people. I mean, Coho has been kind of a mentor for me all along. I mean, you know, when you come into the business, I mean, he was really, I came in in 1988. He was at the pinnacle of his career. Um, and, you know, just a, you know, fantastic official. And he's brought that over, you know, post-career to, you know, not only to our staff as being, a, you know, an officiating manager, but also in some private endeavors that he's had along the way with his own school and, you know, his internet program that he has going now. I mean, he's really been a leader in, in educating officials and, you know, he's given a lot back and, you know, it's uh, just a great person. And, and Jay, uh, um, 
you know, I'll say this, it's hard, but uh, Pierre Maguire always said to me, and he, he kept saying to me, even this year, he said, Jay Shears and you are the two best linesmen I've ever watched. And, you know, and Jay's just, uh, you know, beyond being a great official, is just a great person. And I think that probably, you know, exceeds his officiating. It's just the type of person he is. And, you know, it's a privilege to call him a friend. And, you know, he's, it's interesting, those guys from Western Canada, I mean, just always been great friends of mine. There's just so many of them out there. And, you know, they're just, they're just great people. I talked to Mike Civic the other day. He's, he's in the hospital a bit from uh, having some blood clots and just, just some really great people. And I've, I've spent, uh, it was actually part of my last season. I did a little uh, farewell tour of uh, Western Canada and stopped in, in Vancouver to see Lonnie Cameron. And I uh, went to Calgary and I had dinner with Civic, Tommy Cowell, uh, Donnie Henderson, uh, Mark Wheeler, uh, Brad Meyer, and then um, Dean Morton was working the game with me. Kazari was working the game with me. And, oh, now I'm going to be lost. There was somebody else there and I'm embarrassed, but um, I got most of them. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Yeah. But it was quite a night in Calgary. It really was. And then I went to Edmonton and our security guys in Edmonton are just probably two of the nicest people you ever want to meet in this world. And so if you got, if you just got nine out of the 10 people, right, that's 90%. That's, that's about what an official can expect for, for accurate calls. Right. I, I didn't do that well in school. So that's why. I went. <laughs> yes. so, uh, okay. um, no, it was just a great trip out there. There's just some great people from Western Canada and Jay's uh, a, a great example of that. And we're lucky to have him in, in St. Louis. Uh, as you know, he's living in St. Louis now. And um, we have a scholarship fund here in St. Louis named after Bill McKenna, who you may remember was a, uh, a scorekeeper for the Blues for many years. His son scorekeeps now and his grandson, Mike McKenna, played in the NHL as a goalie. Um, but Bill McKenna we, was a referee at one time. And at, at, at the time, he was one of the oldest referees in USA hockey back in the 80s and the 90s. Um, but we have a scholarship in his name and we're able to provide really good scholarships uh, to uh, young hockey officials. And we're not talking about 250 or $500. We're talking about some significant funding. The reason I'm telling you that is Jay Shares has uh, agreed to be on our board for that McKenna Scholarship Foundation. So that's an excellent addition to our board. Yeah. That's awesome. Great person to have on with. Yeah. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna make sure we're doing things just right, I'm sure. But, but no, he, he's a great guy. Um, so... I want to go back, of course, everybody in hockey probably knows you for your work in the NHL, but, and, and, and I, as you know, I'm involved with kind of starting out, helping get officials started and mentoring them and all of that. I want you to go back, if you can, to your first game ever, and maybe talk about, first of all, how you got involved in officiating, and then maybe if you can even remember that first game, how you felt on the ice, or maybe after the game, how you felt. Yeah, no, I, was, I started working after I got, uh, I was, was in college and it wasn't good enough to play at the University of New Hampshire. So I started working at the local rink here in town, um, driving the Zamboni. And they, every spring they would run this tournament. Um, it was like an invitational tournament, um, try to raise money for the local youth organization. And they'd invite a bunch of teams from out of town. So they had games going all weekend long and they needed officials. So uh, the person that was president of Dobie Utaki was a woman named Barbara McDonough and nobody told Barbara McDonough no. So uh, she asked me to referee my first game and, uh, you know, I was in that tournament and I got invited to do that. And then, um, you know, and, and I remember that, that fall, whatever, when I first started doing it, it was, um, you know, this is an interesting part of the whole officiating story. The, the, the clinic, the USA clinic, it wasn't as detailed as it is now, but, uh, it was at like four o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. And I had worked that morning driving the Zamboni from like 6.30 to like three o'clock. And I, I went, I got home at like, you know, my house wasn't very far from the, from the rink. I got home and uh, laid down on the couch and um, I almost didn't get up. I almost didn't go to the clinic. And when you think about that and you think back, you know, four years of, four or five years of youth hockey officiating in college and then 32 years in the NHL, just think I never almost didn't get off the couch. Yeah, well, I'm That's... glad you got you have plenty of time to, to get on the couch now with, with hockey on pause. 
Um, so that's that's really how I got into it. And really, my mentor in the whole thing was uh, my high school hockey coach. Uh, he was like the assistant director at the rank. His name is Dan Repose. And, and Dan was uh, refereeing in the Hockey East. And so it was something that, you know, I kind of aspired to uh, to do. I went and watched him work a game and, you know, kind of got interested more and more in officiating. And um, the local, uh, the New Hampshire's part of the New England district, but the state referee in chief was a guy named Kay Duckworth. And I remember going, a keen New Hampshire is like two hours away, which is a long way in New Hampshire because it's not that big a state, but I live on one side and Keene, New Hampshire is on the other side. But I went and worked a state tournament game with, uh, with Kay Duckworth in Keene, New Hampshire. And uh, after the game, he told me he was going to nominate me to go to um, summer camp in Colorado Springs. And that was really my, my launching pad there. I mean, uh, uh, it was just a great opportunity. And I got to go back the, the following year. I got to go two years in a row to Colorado Springs. Back then, they had like two levels of camps. And so the second year that I was at the camp, um, Brian Lewis came in from the NHL and, and spotted me. And uh, that really is the rest is history. I went and worked. Um, Back then, uh, USA Hockey and, and U.S. Olympic Committee had the Sync Festival, mm -hmm. and they ran them every summer, and they had the 80 best college players in the country would come in and, and play games in the summertime. And so that summer was in Houston, Texas. And so uh, I went to Houston, Texas. Uh, I remember Marty Demers was there with me. Um, a uh, referee named, named Steve Petrowski, who's actually the Secretary of Rules Editor for the NCAA and the Big Ten uh, Supervisor of Officials now. Um, but we were all in um, Houston, Texas uh, for a week or so, and, and John McCauley, Wes's dad, came, watched me work, and uh, Mark Rudolph was working for USA Hockey at the time. Mark's legendary. Mm -hmm. And Mark comes down after the, after the first game, and uh, after the first period of the first game I work, he comes into the locker room, and he goes, how far do you live from Portland, Maine? And I go, I live an hour from Portland, Maine. And he looks at me and goes, you're going to be working the American League this year. And so I started working the American League in uh, Portland, Maine. This was like 1986, 87. And uh, I also at the same time got into Hockey East. And Hockey East really, was a, it was a tough league to get into. It was the best college league. And they were the, the big dog. But, and they still are the best college league. And so it was pretty tough to get into. And uh, so the first year, I only worked like a four or five non-league games at the University of Maine. It's like three hours from my house. So I worked like four or five weekday non-league games at the University of Maine. And then um, the second year, I, you know, I went back to the U.S. Olympic Festival and they were picking the officials for uh, the 88 Calgary Olympics. And so um, they were picking a referee and a linesman to go represent the USA at the 88 Calgary Olympics. So uh, in 87, we were in, in Greensboro, North Carolina. And Wes's dad came again. John McCauley was there. I remember uh, Jack Parker from famous coach from Boston University was yelling at me after one of the games, but um, uh, John told me I made the right call. So that's all that mattered to me. But, um, you know, no, there Mark told me, he says, uh, he says no, he says, Dennis LaRue was there, Eddie Horn. Um, There's a lot of great U.S. officials at that one. And and so he, um, he comes down, uh, Mark comes to me on the day before the gold medal game. He says, I got good news and bad news. He goes, what do you want? I go, well, what's the good news? He goes, the good news is you're working the gold medal game. I says, well, what's the bad news? He goes, well, you're not going to the Olympics. And I go, what? He goes, yeah, you're not going to go to the Olympics. I go, why not? And he says, because you're going to go work for the NHL. And, and he was right, because a year later, I did get hired by the NHL and um, you know, that, that, that whole season actually by not going to the Olympics actually worked out great for me because I got a lot of opportunities in hockey East. I worked the, uh, the 88 bean pot championship at Boston garden. I worked both weeks back then, like nobody worked both weeks of the bean pot. I worked both weeks of the bean pot. I worked the hockey East championship game at the garden. And I then uh, went and worked the uh, 88 NCAA championship game in Lake Placid. And none of those things would have happened if I had gone to the Olympics. And so it really, it all worked out great for me. And probably one of the best stories I can tell is that, you know, is that, you know, I always tell us that, you know, you say this at, at officiating schools all the time, you never know who's going to move, who's watching your work. But um, here's a great story for you is uh, after I got hired, there was a gentleman at the time who was the commissioner of the CCHA, which was another college hockey conference. His name was Bill Began. And Bill Began's a former NHL referee. 
So at my uh, first training camp, we were all um, out having lunch one day and, and Bill Began showed up. And so I figured I, he, I'd never met him before. So I figured I'd go over and introduce myself. And I said, uh, I said, you know, hi, I'm, I'm Brian Murphy. He goes, he goes, oh no, he goes, I know who you are. He goes, I watched you work. He goes, I watched you work the 1988 Bean Pot Championship game at the Boston Garden. He goes, and I got up the next morning and I called John McCauley and told me he had to hire you. So it was, uh, it was an interesting story, but I had never met the person in my entire life, but he called John McCauley and told him that National Hockey League should hire Brian Murphy. And that's a great piece of advice for young officials that are thinking about going far with this is you never know who's going to be in the building. It may be that, uh, so just this past season or maybe two seasons ago, I was doing like a Bantam game or something with a couple of kids and, and Brad Watson was in the building because he was there with his, his kids team. You know, and he's a he's a retired NHL referee, and um, I, I think that's that's crucial. And uh, we've got a kid here in St. Louis who's I think he's going to be a sophomore in college. Who I just was out at a rink one day, and I watched him work, and I said, "This is this kid's the real deal." And we fast tracked him. Within a year, he was doing high school hockey and AAA hockey, and now he's on his way to do juniors and stuff. And it, you just never know who you're gonna who you're gonna see in the building. So, great advice. Yeah. Yeah. And there's always those opportunities. I mean, you got a lot of great young officials there. Cam Fleming uh, has been at some camps with me and uh, Addison Brush. I mean, you got some great, uh, great young officials there in St. Louis and uh, probably missing a few names too on top of that. Um, Sean Morgan, I think, was originally from St. Louis. Yes. Works yeah. HL now. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of good young uh, officials that have come from that area. And, you know, it's just a product of the hockey growing there. So you, you mentioned Sean Morgan, my, you, and you told a story. I'll tell you a quick story about Sean Morgan. He and I worked uh, a national tournament together right when he was coming up and we were getting ready, dressed for one game and I was going to be the linesman and he was going to be the referee. And as we're walking out to the rink, he goes, this is my first game wearing the bands <laughs> <laughs> in a national tournament. <laughs> and so he came down and helped with the Tim Peel camp this last summer. And we were reminiscing about that story. And I said, Moggs, what, what, could you remember that? And he goes, I, I, I didn't know what to say. You know, Bob Cunningham told me I was going to ref and I told him I'd never ref before. He says, oh, you'll be fine. Just go do what feels natural. <laughs> so that was a good time, but he, he did great. But okay. So Murph, listen, um, this is not on the agenda, but something that I like to do every once in a while, keep these things light. Okay. So we're going to do a, a, I've got two rapid fire rounds for you and you can choose between the two categories, okay? Okay. The first category is USA Hockey, and the second category is called Full Course. Uh, I'm always picking USA Hockey, so it's USA easy. Hockey. Okay, we'll do the Full Course one later. Okay. So this is just rapid fire questions. All right. See, see how you do. What was USA Hockey originally called? Uh, a House Amateur Hockey Association, of the United States. Very good. Okay. Do you know when it was founded? A House. No. Okay, 1937 in New York City, and there was Eastern Amateur, New York Metropolitan, Michigan, Ontario, and the International, which was Ontario and Minnesota Leagues, formed A House. Just FYI. You never know when you might need to know that. What year did A House become USA Hockey? Uh, I'm going to guess uh, 1990. Very close, 1991. Yep, 1991. And who was the first referee in chief for USA Hockey? Oh, Hal Trumbull. Was he? I thought it was Mark Rudolph. Referee in chief? Yeah. No, that's, see, that's a different title. Mark Rudolph was the officiating program director. Oh, you're right. Okay, you, you corrected you me. Titles. Jeez. All right. All right. I I might have to get that. You realize uh, Hal Trumbull worked for Olympics? What's that? Olympics, yeah. Okay. All right. There's one American-born official in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Who is it? In the Oh, um, Bill Chadwick. There you go. And then how many districts are in USA Hockey? This 13. is a bonus question. 13. Uh, not quite. I think it's 12, isn't it? I was going to see if you could name all of them, but I won't put you through that. <laughs> <laughs> I could right. be honest. I thought it was 13. All right. Well, let's see. Atlantic, Central, Massachusetts, Michigan, Mid-American, Minnesota, New England, New York, Northern Plains, Pacific, Rocky Mountain, Southeastern. Whatever. 12, 13, something like that. Plus or minus five. All I right. So I told you that's why I wanted to officiate. I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, me too. Me too. Um, 
All right. So talk about, so you've talked a little bit about college hockey and you've talked about your early career in the NHL, but why don't you talk about your kind of transition from like being a rookie in the NHL to being, you know, a, the go-to guy that's making the Stanley cup to then the end of your career where you're mentoring new officials. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's any leagues, it's tough. Anytime you start in a new league, it's tough. Uh, I don't care, you know, what league you're starting in. Anytime you start a new league, it's tough because you're at the bottom of the rung and it's just the way it is. And you go from league to league and then you get to the NHL and you realize how good the guys are and how competitive it is. And, you know, and, and everything is just so magnified at that level. And it's even more so now than it was 32 years ago when I started. Um, but, you know, back then there was, there was really, there was 23 linesmen when I started and, you know, two of us, Pierre Shampoo and I were kind of like 40, 40 um, American league in the NHL and everybody else was just worked exclusively in the NHL. And, you know, it was tough. I mean, they had, a you know, there wasn't as nearly as many officials. It was much harder to get into. They'd be lucky to hire one or two, officials every year. I mean, the year I got hired, uh, Shane Hire got hired too. He got hired full-time into the business. And I got hired 40-40 and it was way better for me. Shane had been working in the Western Hockey League and it was he was ready probably to go in and work full-time. For me, it was perfect to go in, get the opportunity um, because I was 40-40 my first two years and it, and it gave me the opportunity to work the American League playoffs at the end of the season and to really develop. And I think those first two years were crucial to my development. The second year I worked, I, we had a bunch of injuries and I worked like 60 NHL games, but at the end of the season, I was able to go back and work the American League playoffs. And that's where I really developed and became a much better official and it was much more challenging. And it really allowed to me in a lot of ways to launch my career. But I think the biggest thing was, is, you know, I, I was fortunate that I got paired up with some guys who were just really great teachers. Uh, Wayne Bonney texted me the other day. I mean, you know, just somebody who was a great teacher. He's living in Montreal. When I first started, he was living in Montreal time. He eventually moved out west, but he was living in Montreal. I worked with him a lot. And, and Gord Brossaker, I worked my first game with Gordy Brossaker. He's an American from Richmond, Virginia. I mean, just a great guy. Just uh, really mentored me quite well. And then Kevin Collins, I mean, I don't know what I can say there. I mean... I worked so many big games with Kevin. And when I first started getting into the playoffs, uh, you know, like I think it was like my third year in the playoffs, I worked the game seven uh, in the first round. They had, they had six game sevens in the first round. And so they, we only had like back then, I think it was 10 officials went on to the second round. So they needed more officials than were really going to go on to the second round work. And so I worked one of the game sevens with Kevin Collins was in Vancouver, Calgary and Vancouver in Vancouver. And what a learning experience, you know, and just those, those opportunities. But Kevin taught me, I, I'd spent the, you know, two weeks with Kevin, the whole first round, we worked six, seven games together. And it was just a, a great learning experience. It just became a better official. And I, I'm a big believer in the mentoring system. I mean, and, and you can pick mentors however you want, but sometimes they're not officially, you, know, you don't have to have like a contract with them or anything, but you know, you can just sit around and talk to them. It's those opportunities a lot of times away from the game where you can learn so much from them. But, you know, fortunately at the NHL level, we have like commercial breaks or there's certain times where you're allowed to mentor officials. You know, and then, and then I got my own opportunity in 95 to work the finals. And, and um, you know, I, I guess, I thought I was ready and I worked, I, I worked well, but it's a lot and it's overwhelming. Uh, I never forget. I, I think my heart rate was so high. It took me about three weeks for it to come down. But uh, unfortunately the series went four straight. It was New Jersey and, um, and Detroit and the series, Jersey won that series uh, four straight in 95. And fortunately, cause I don't know if my heart could have taken working too many more games. Um, but, you know, it's just uh, then, you you know, you, and then it's really like that then it becomes your goal every year. And it's a I guess it's a tough way to start the season. But basically, you know, my career from 95 on was either I worked the Stanley Cup finals or it wasn't a very successful year. And I went through different periods there in my career. You know, I went nine years without working the finals and you go through different challenges and mental challenges and. You know, and then I worked three Stanley, I worked three finals in a row, and then I, and then that nine-year glitch came in, and I had like, I had two gaps of like one of like six and one of nine, and when you factor that into how many times I worked the finals, you know, I worked them really in bunches, and you know, it's just, um, 
it's a challenge to get to that level, but it's something, you know, every year, like I always feel like you know, you're starting at the bottom every year. You're not, you know, you, you have to prove yourself every year, no matter who you are. And that's when I showed up at training camp every year, I didn't show up thinking, oh, I'm a Stanley Cup finalist. I showed up thinking I got to prove myself that I'm a Stanley Cup finalist all over again. Right, and then right. really in my career, we, we've obviously had a huge transition in the last five or six years, but I, I've enjoyed it and, and really, you know, embrace the fact that, you know, try to be a mentor for some younger guys coming in and, and take real pride in that, that, you know, officials call me and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of retired, but just in the last, you know, last couple of weeks, I've had five or six officials call me for advice, whether it's on ice or off ice advice or whatever, just to talk. And, um, you know, I, I treasure those relationships that, you know, you've, I've tried to build over time and, uh, it's, it's been, um, it's been pretty good that way. I really, I just really enjoy, um, that aspect of, um, you know, mentoring officials. I think, you know, you have to, you have to know when to pat them on the back, you know, have to know how to yell at them. You have to, you'd have to ask Ryan Daisy cause I've done all that to him. Um, but you know, I mean, you know, there's a kid that, you know, came up through the USA program kind of at the same time Sean Morgan did and, and Daisy made it. And, you know, I, I don't know necessarily exactly why or whatever, but he deserves to be there. He's an awesome official. And, you know, but I can also tell you, I've gone, I was teaching him in, in, at some summer camps. And I remember teaching him at the world junior camp in Lake Placid. And I, I talked to him and another official outside the room and basically told him, if that's the way you're going to work, you're never going to work in the national hockey league. And sometimes those are hard things to say, but you know, it's easy for me because I just feel like I have to be honest with the guys. And sometimes, you know, you need a pat on the back and sometimes you need a kick in the butt. And yeah. as a mentor, you have to try to figure out when when you got to give one and when you got to give the other. And That's right. That's right. And I kind of want to segue into the next question because I think this, this ties in great with what we were just talking about is what is something, whether you're working with an official for the first time or whether you're going to the rink and watching a peewee game or whether you're in the stands and you're looking for your new you know role with hockey east what gets you excited about an official like what's something that you see that immediately gets you excited about an official and then on the flip side what is something that can really turn turn you off from an official i think the biggest thing i mean i'm looking at for their presence and their skating ability because i think a lot of the other stuff i can i feel like i could teach it um, but you know, skating ability is some, a lot of cases to me is a natural ability. Um, I guess you can work on it. I certainly worked on mine. So to say you can't work on it is not true, but, um, you got to have some natural skating ability and, and I don't necessarily mean you got to be a great X player, but you have to have some natural abilities of skating ability. But I mean, to me, it's more of, uh, I'm looking at their effort. I'm looking at, you know, are they coming on the ice and are they giving a real good effort or are they just coming on the ice and, they think they're Joe cool and, and, you know, want to look good and all that. I never worried about looking good. I worried about hustling and working hard. And that's what got me where I, where I got to, but it's really that presence on the ice. I mean, I, I can watch an official for 15 or 20 minutes and I can tell whether he's going to be a referee or linesman. I can, you know, tell within grasp of, you know, what level he's capable of going to. I mean, you know, and it's uh, you know, it's, Joe Warren's class example. I, I, Joe Warren's used to, uh, I don't know if people know Joe Warren's, but he's the director of hockey ops for the uh, ECHL. But Joe Warren's, when I started officiating, was uh, he got he shagged tape for us. He was 16 year old. He worked the locker room with the Buffalo Sabres and he'd shag tape for us and get us Gatorade in between periods with the Sabres games. And Joe came to a USA camp when he was 18 years old and just tremendous presence. And, and he looked like a referee. and you know, he, unfortunately he got hired by the NHL and it didn't work out, but you could just tell he was that good. And at 18 years old, I knew he was that good. Chris Rooney is another one. So I had Chris Rooney at a, at a summer camp in Colorado Springs back in the early nineties. I taught Chris Rooney at a summer camp and I knew Chris Rooney was going to be good. Probably he's going to go down arguably as the, unless someone comes on behind him and maybe I'm sure they will, but he's going to go down as the greatest American referee of all time and no disrespect to Bill Chadwick and, and his pathway and everything. And maybe things are different back then, but certainly in this era, Chris Rooney is going to now as the greatest American referee in the last 20, 30 years. And, you know, at 18 years old, when I taught him at a summer camp, I knew he was going to be that good. That's awesome. That's great. 
well, if he's, if he's here, if he's watching out there, I'm sure he's going to be um, buying you a couple of beers later or something. No, Rudy's too cheap. You won't do that. <laughs> um, we do have a comment from somebody viewing here, Dan O'Very, who's one of our local officials. And he says, what do you find is the best way to be mentally prepared for games when you've spent the day traveling, for example, or for example, or sitting in an office all day as some of us do? Well, and I, his, his thing is that, you know, it's, um, it's challenging at every level of that. I mean, I, unless you're working at the job as a full-time job, I mean, you're going to be coming from somewhere or doing something and there's always going to be distractions, but I think it's two things. One is, and this is a big thing for me, is I never have the cell phone on locker. When I get to the rink, it's like, you know, I, I, the phone to me is like, I, I'm silence it or whatever. I don't necessarily shut it off. I silence it. It's in my pocket. I'm not looking at it. And, and I have a routine. I'm, I'm a big believer in routines. I'm a big believer in habits. And you, you really just got to get into a routine and whatever that routine is should get you mentally focused for the game. And whether it's, you know, we get to the rink an hour and a half for the game or whether you get the 10 or 15 minutes for the game, you've got to have a routine. And whatever that, whatever you find that routine to be that works for you, that's what you've got to use, whether it's to get a cup of coffee or, or whatever it is. But I always found that I just enjoyed the time in the locker room. And that's where, you know, I think some officials tend to get to the rink and they're out walking around or doing something like that. And I tend to, I just love to be in the locker room. I love to be sitting there talking to the other guys that I'm working with. And I think sometimes, you know, you just, you have to have a, a mental checklist you know, whether you have it written down, a lot of guys write it down on a piece of paper. For me, a lot, most of the time I had it in my mind. It really wasn't a, a mental checklist. It's, for me, it was more of I had things written down in my mind that I, I knew that I wanted to work on. And I think the biggest thing that when you're trying to develop as an official, and, and Ron Foyt taught me this, is that and Ron Foyt was an NHL linesman back in the um, mid-80s and, and just a great person from Minnesota. And that became the WCHA referee in chief for a while and just a great person that you can really only work on one thing at a time every game. So don't try to go out there. If people have told you things to work on, or you think you've got things to work on, don't go out there in your head and have a multitude of things going on in your head, because that's not going to make you better. What you really want to do is pick one thing that you want to work on for that game and master it, and then move on to the next thing, but have something every game that you're working on and realize that, you know, if it's an easier game, you know, there's your opportunity to maybe work on some things to make yourself better instead of, uh, you know, because I, I, and I get, I talk to officials a lot about this who are trying to develop and, and rise up the ladder is that it gets a point where uh, quality and quantity kind of come into play. And you, you know, when you first start out, you just want to work quantity, just get as many reps as you possibly can, or as coaches would call them touches. You know, you just want to get as many touches as you possibly can. And once you've moved up the ladder and you're at a certain level and there's a certain point where you're going to get to, then it becomes, you want the best games you can possibly work. You don't want to, you want to focus on those games and not work a ton of games. And to give you an example is I don't want a division one college referee in Boston working two high school games in the afternoon and then come work a division one college game for me at night. I don't want, I want a guy who's, you know, I want him fresh, ready to work the division one college hockey game. And so it gets to be a case of, of quality versus quantity. You're only going to get better by working the best games and focusing on those games. And you have to know when you get to your point in development, when you got to switch from quantity to quality. All right. Great, great point. Um, did you like that first rapid fire round or? No, I didn't. Okay, well, <laughs> they didn't know as many answers. I'd like to know. This one, this one, I think you're going to do better on. Can, can we do the second one? It's called. Full, full, I love challenges. You full, kidding me? Full court. There's a rumor out there that you like to eat, especially younger in your career, right? That's so. hundred percent true. I like to eat older in my career. Like okay, okay. Okay. So this one's called full course. All right. This will be a little more yeah. fun. All right. Favorite appetizer. Uh, chicken wings. Beautiful. And what would you have to drink with that? Uh, when I was younger, a beer. Okay. And now a glass of milk or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, probably uh, Captain Morgan. Okay. Uh, super salad and what type? Both. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. I love, I love tomato soup and 
and uh, I hate Caesar salad, so just a garden salad. Or oh, my wife made this beautiful strawberry salad the, the two nights ago. It was just amazing. All right, tomato soup with a, with a grilled cheese sandwich dipped in it, maybe. That might be what I'm having for dinner. <laughs> okay, good. All right, um, surf, turf, or bird? Bird. Okay, and you, you can say all three if you want to. Yeah, bird, <laughs> bird for sure. I'm not surf and turf. No, Jay right. and turf. And turf. All right. Favorite Bob's Big Boy menu item. <laughs> Oh, uh, now, now listen, that double cheeseburger, that, that's Stewie's famous story with me. Right. So. Okay. Double cheeseburger. All right. And then what's for dessert? Uh, dessert. Uh, I like, I love ice cream. Wes, I always make Wes buy the ice cream. When I work with Wes. He has to buy the ice cream because he works better when he buys the ice cream. Oh, that's good to know. So every work we don't. So usually the game is we usually after lunch, we'll go get ice cream and we usually flip for it. But with Wes, I got him convinced that we don't, we're not going to flip, that he works better when he buys. So he goes and buys everyone ice cream when he works with me. I got, you know what? Can I, can I borrow that? Can I put that in my page? Absolutely. Okay, good. I love it. So Dan O'Berry, if you're out there watching, which he's the one who asked the question, the next time we work together, you're buying the ice cream. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Um, all right, I'm going to ask you one more question because we try to keep these. This has already been 35 minutes, by the way. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, I'm going to ask you one more question uh, before we have to before before we have to go. Um, what's some advice that you've kind of given advice throughout this? But what can you give advice for like the three different sets of officials? The new young, you know, young buck officials, the core 30 and 40 year old kind of you know go to guys. And then the guys who are maybe 50, 60 vets that are kind of near the end of their career. What's some advice you can give to officials in each of those roles? Okay, let's, let's start with the, let's go in reverse order. That's fine. The older guys, I, I think you have to uh, embrace the fact that you're a mentor and that people look up to you and that you have to do it better than other people. And I think that's kind of the mental mindset I've had over the last five or six years of my career is that, you know, I realized people were looking up to me and that I had to do it better. I had to, you know, be a leader. I couldn't take shortcuts along the way. I mean, that, you know, I, I just, I had to be better. And, you know, and that, that's kind of like, you know, you, you just, you have to embrace the role and realize that, you know, you've, you've gotten into a different role in the, the, big games, wherever you want to do, they're going to come to you or they want to come to you, but you have to brace your role as a leader, a mentor, and really give back to the game. Everybody asks, well, why do you give back? You give back because you've gotten so much out of it and you don't realize that you're a leader in your local organization. Everybody, you know, you know, you know, you have me on your podcast, but there's people in your local organization that are their own leaders in that local organization and people look up to those local leaders and you've got to be the one person that, you know, you've got to do it the right way. Uh, to the middle of the pack guys, I mean, I, I think the biggest, the biggest thing that I, I always teach it in school and it's, I'd love to take credit for this line, but I can't, is uh, trust what you see. And, and that, that is really the basic, I, at every level or any, any time I go speak to officials, I always try to weave that into the conversation. And it's a basic fundamental line. And, and USA Hockey runs this uh, program of merit, which I'm fortunate to be privileged to be a part of as an instructor. And uh, the back of the camp t-shirt says, trust what you see. And Dennis LaRue came up with that line. Uh, arguably one of the second best referee over the last one, Mark Fossett. So we got a few of them, but <laughs> a great American referee, trust what you see. And, and really, you know, don't worry about making mistakes because we all make them. And I think that's, that's probably, I mean, but you have to learn from when I get a video, every time I get a video, uh, the biggest thing that I'm looking at from the video is how can I teach what happened in the video and where the official made a mistake or well, how can I teach this thing to be better? And that's how I'm looking at, it. I'm looking at, it, you know, you either, you gotta have a, you either got a fixed mindset or you got a growth mindset. If you got a fixed mindset, you're looking at it as, oh, I made a mistake and, you know, you're just not going to get better. If you look at it of, I've got to learn something here and you got a growth mindset and that's how you're going to get better. And so if you're that middle of the pack official, you should want to try to get better. 
uh, USA Hockey needs great officials at every level, and they need you. Um, they need you to cover games. You might not want to work. I, I didn't want to work all the games I got assigned. Trust me. I won't, I won't list the cities or the places, but, you know, I didn't want to work all the games I had to work. But you know what? It's still the National Hockey League. And then you have to realize that those kids on Sunday morning, it's the Stanley Cup to them. It really is. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's, you know, we watch, you, you may watch NHL hockey on your, on your TV, but when those kids show up on Sunday morning, to them, that's their Stanley Cup. So the younger officials just go out and have fun. Everybody should have fun at, at every level, but really go out, have fun with it. Try to learn as much as you can. I don't really encourage younger officials to really, I don't encourage people to start too young. Uh, I didn't start till I was 19 and I'm not discrediting that, but you know, Rooney started when he was like 11 or 12. And, and so there's, there's different pathways. Rooney would tell you to start young. Uh, I'm telling you, no, I'm telling you play hockey as long as you can. Um, but if, once you decide you want to come official, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but don't put too much pressure on yourself. Just work the games, learn as much as you can and, and embrace it and have fun and, and really just go out and enjoy it and, and focus on, you know, when we have kids at camps and they all want to, they all want to get into pro hockey. It, it's all about getting your education. And that's the biggest thing I tell every kid that's ever come to a summer camp or sat in front of me, or I've talked on the phone with, you need to finish your college education before you ever think about going pursuing anything to do with officiating. Once you've done, you finish your college and there's a lot more avenues now and online learning is certainly going to become a lot more of an avenue after this whole pandemic thing, but you know, finish your education, get that done and then go ahead and pursue whatever you want in officiating. Great, great points. And uh, uh, our friend, Dan O'Very, who um, I uh, pinged about, buy an ice cream said a uh, deal and I'll even buy for Murph if he's if he's in town and wants to come mentor us so. <laughs> I would love to okay. that'd be great we'll, we'll hold you to that um but what you said right there about the young officials we started an acronym last year that I think is great and we call it heat all right and it's hustle enthusiasm attitude and teamwork and that was that that's our acronym for and that's oh. how we try to and press upon our young officials, those four things. If you can go out and hustle, if you can go have enthusiasm and be really energetic, got a great attitude, positive, and you could work together as a team, you're gonna go far. I love that, you know, and I think that's that's important. And, you know, it's one thing I'm bringing to the college level is, you know, just a few mental phrases, you know, you talk about, you know, how can you get better is this, you know, you should have a few mental phrases in your head about some things that maybe you've learned about fishing. So you. You don't want to think too much out there, but just have a few mental phrases in your head that, uh, you know, are reminders when you see things on the ice is to, you know, hey, that's not very good. Well, you feel free to use it. You can borrow it as much as you want. There's no royalty charge. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, my friend, this has been great. Um, I know we've only met a few times in person, but I feel like uh, we're good friends already. And I, I look forward to, to watching you and the rest of your career. And if you're ever in St. Louis, please look us up and say hello. We'd love to We'd love to see you in person again. I, I love St. Louis, so I'll definitely be back there. All right. Um, for those of you watching, we're going to take a week off next week uh, because I have a little vacation planned with my family. Every once in a while, I get to take some time off. Uh, but then two weeks from today, or I think it's on Wednesday, two weeks, we've got Jeff Lavecchio coming on. And Jeff Lavecchio grew up in St. Louis and was the son, is the son of a veteran referee who worked in the CCHA. Um, and then Jeff ended up signing for the Boston Bruins and played for Providence for a number of years and the San Antonio Rampage, I think, in the American League and then went out to, the, uh, to Europe. But he's really into fitness now, so he's going to talk a lot about his fitness program and especially off-ice fitness and how it can help with officials. I'm sure it's helped you, Murph. Uh, Absolutely. Years. I believe in that. All right. So he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna talk about that. Maybe we'll do some uh, rapid fire questions with him for his, his full course meal. It's probably not going to be as exciting as yours though. Give him the Bob's big boy question. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, once again, thanks a lot, Murph. It's been great. Uh, we really appreciate your time and best of luck. Take Thank care. You. Thanks, Andy. Take care. Thank you for having me. All right. Bye-bye.